Yeah. Well, speaking of, so let's let's talk about this uh, with Dune. So uh, I'll share my thoughts. I kind of shared some with the members, but go ahead and take a second here. Give us your thoughts on it. You know, what you liked, what you didn't like. I know there's some legitimate complaints out there about it. I get it. And that's fine and dandy. Uh, but what when you saw it, like, what would you think? Wow. Um, do you want me to be spoiler free as I can be? Uh, I don't know how you spoil Dune. It's such a well-known story. Some people have been, been around. panicking about it because, okay. I mean, I don't know. I look. I, I'm gonna. Pro I could possibly say some very controversial things that might be upsetting to some folks. That wouldn't be the end. Of the world. Um, go for that it. That wouldn't be the end of the world. But okay, I'll start like grab this. Grab my water. Hang on one second. Go ahead. Yeah, you do that. Uh, I did enjoy parts of the film. It's one of those movies you have to see in the theater. Uh, in that respect. But I feel like there's going to be some variations among the reactions to the film, and I'm already kind of seeing it. Um, most people who are completely unaware of what Dune is, they seem to be enjoying it for the visceral experience that it is, and I'm sure they're enjoying what story is there, if they can follow it. Um, people who are subtly familiar with Dune are probably going to get the most 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 enjoyment out of the experience but then there's people that are the hardcore book fans and lore fans who are going to debate this for the next few years i think and i'm going to be probably falling into that latter category and i was hoping like andre or somebody else would be here at this point for this part of the conversation to help me out with it but uh yeah there's some there's some a issues i have with deviations from the original script and there's some modernisms in here that are kind of in my opinion they're fed to us in a way that are candy coated um and you don't and not everybody notices them and some people don't even want to notice them and if you point them out it makes them angry because they enjoyed the film so much which is fine i'm, I'm, I'm not trying to take away anybody's enjoyment of the film but uh i posted a meme on twitter and i, I even posted it in the background here it kind of just gives my feelings on the whole thing you know just wait let me grab it i was say i got it here too if not here i got it oh here oh shoot where did it just go oh here well i got it here there you go go ahead i got you yeah basically this is kind of how i feel right now and it's just because there's so there's so many subtle issues with this adaptation now that if it was any other ip star trek star wars you name it so many people in my community, I think, would be calling it out, but it comes in such a pretty package, yep. right? That for the, and people enjoyed a lot of what they took in, and I did too. The first hour, I was amazed. I loved the first hour of this movie. Mm -hmm. Once it gets past that first hour, leading towards the third act, is when my issues really set in, and my biggest complaints are the two ad adaptations we had before this did more with less time. Mm -hmm. okay covered a hell of a lot more ground um and and a few deviations from characters not having certain characters in there certain groups of characters uh the fudged kind of like relationships between certain characters again i'm trying to be as spoiler free as i can and i don't even have so much of a problem with because uh, i know the big elephant in the dune is zendaya and i don't <laughs> even have so much of a problem with her as I do just what they did to her character. Yep. Okay. There was now a change. Yeah. There's a lot of people going, well, I didn't see no girl, girl boss stuff. And it's like, well, you should have, that's the problem. See here. That's the th difference is the one time that they had the, the license to basically give you a lot of what they've been trying to shove down our throats with Chani. And they didn't do it. In fact, if anything, they took away a lot of her agency and they took a away a lot of her strong traits and made her, in my opinion, and a lot of other people, and this is where people will agree with me uh, on this part, the other part not so much when I get to it here, but that that all those strong traits were kind of stripped away from her, and they turned her into a whiny teenager. Yeah. And that's the big issue with the third act. Now, there's a part about midway through that a lot of people are overlooking or they really push put up, put up with a lot of resistance or put a lot of resistance up to my point on this and Andre brought it up in his video too. And there's a couple people that have noticed it and somewhat agree with me too. And it's subtle. It's very subtle. 
And what it is, and this isn't so much spoiler because it's like midpoint in the movie. They make it in this movie. It's not in the book, but in this movie, they have it to where there's two different types of Fremen. There's the North and the South. And the South is made up of very religious people who are following this charismatic leader who turns out to be a false messiah. Sound familiar? And they're also getting made fun of by the younger generation from the Northern Fremen who are not as religious. Mm -hmm. Okay, now some people are like, Tom, you're making this shit up and blah, blah. It's in the movie and it's not in the book. So take it as you will. I mean, there's some things you could say about, well, the, the, the inspirations that the book comes from and this nation and that nation and Arab and Islam, and blah, 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 blah. But guess what? That's not in the book. I think you have a fair point. You know, part of my issue was I'm so far. And it's not a huge it. part of the movie so no, much as it is just no. a subtle little thing amongst yep. little things along the line. But anyway, I just wanted to get that out there. Cause that's the one I think most people are going to put up a lot of resistance on, but cause they really my, do like Stilgar as a character in this, but it's, a big yeah. deviation from him in the book too. So, yeah. Well, that was part of my problem is that obviously the 90 plus percent of my memory of this story comes from the movie and, and adaptations before this, because I've been, it's been so long since I read the book and I find myself struggling as I'm watching it to try to remember. Well, I know that's different than what I've seen before in previous iterations of Dune but I don't remember which one's right. I'm pretty sure the previous adaptations had this and part of what you were saying, like Cheney was always a strong female character in the sense that she knew that she never questioned that, you know, Paul loved her or cared about her more than anyone else. Um, and knew that he had to do what he had to do at the end for the good of everybody. Right. But in this one's like you said, she Zendaya has been directed to play the character where she gets angry about it. So I mean, that was a deviation, but again, not much that, that I was like, oh, okay, fine. Um, but yeah, the North and South thing was something that I thought was, I didn't remember that either, but I could not remember for sure whether or not that was from, you know, somewhere in the book that it's been 20 something years since I read it. And I just don't remember. The closest um, thing that I know of, and I don't remember which book it's in because I've only read and, and familiar with the Paul Atreides portions of the story. Yeah. story so beyond that i don't really know and this is where i wish andre is here there is my understanding another set of fremen that are brought up but i don't remember when and where they're brought up but the ironic thing about it is is they're almost the equivalent of woke fremen mm -hmm. notice they are going to ignore the shit out of them because they're seen as the weaker bunch because <laughs> yeah. so, they're seen as lazy and weak so like <laughs> yeah but i i don't remember the specifics of it all so Anyway, like, yeah, it just, I just, I think it's kind of funny that they totally ignored that aspect, but they leaned into the other thing. Um, and also the point of Chani just not being supportive of Paul and the, and look, that, the other that's thing is they, stuck at it they don't have the big year jump here, here. Like there's a two, three year jump in the story that we don't see. Uh, and there's some other issues I have there that they don't even have here. So this movie takes place within like a four to six month at most sp span of time. And uh, there's some other issues I had with it too, but uh, did you get a chance to see it then or not? Yeah, I went to go see it. Uh, oh, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't know. what did you think? I loved it. I, I enjoyed it, except for the two spots you were talking about. Um, <clears throat> like I said, in my theater, the aspect ratio did switch around. That was a little weird, uh, but the movie itself, overall, I really did enjoy it. Um, except for, like you said, the stuff with Cheney jumped out at me that. That's different. It kind of felt like, <clears throat> honestly, it kind of felt like they took that character and did the same thing they did with Zendaya in Spider-Man and made her MJ, but she wasn't exactly MJ. Uh, you know, she wasn't Mary Jane. Uh, they changed kind of the character. She was a, a another pissed off teenager again. Uh, and it's like, okay, we got that Zendaya in this second movie with Dune. But I felt like the rest of it was so good, like you said, it was such a very pretty package that I was willing to forgive little changes like that. I was very impressed with Timothy Chalamet's performance. I thought he did a great job. He and did I know, do great. I think he should be up for best uh, best actor. Sorry, I just wanted to point that out too. Yeah, I agree. That's one of the first things I said. He should be up there for best actor. I get the fact that he loves to dress up in women's clothing. 
uh, on the red carpet or whatever. Just one of these things. Okay, I can separate the actor from the performance if the performance is really good. I have seen people make comments that, okay, well, you know, he's he's still such a scrawny little kid. How is he going toe-to-toe in physical combat? I will say, and I think to Tom's point, the whole time jump issue, if they had done this and handled it a little bit better, I think they could have solved for that. And that is, you're supposed to have, it's supposed to be a couple of years later when when you go from the first to the second part of the saga. Um, well, we Paul should get more to base players. He's more grown up, and then he's... Put, they could have put a little bit more weight, bulk, and muscle onto him for the second film. That would have solved that issue. Like, okay, now he's he's been living in the desert. He hasn't been living in a palace anymore. He's not a little kid. He's grown up. He's a man. He's he's becoming a leader. He's been fighting, and do, he should be bigger looking. I didn't I mean, mind it so much because yeah. I look at it this way: he'd be like, more muscular, but he'd yeah, be leaner because he wouldn't Dave been Batista eating so bigger. well. Yeah, not you know, Dave I Batista, mean, but yeah. maybe it was just me. I thought he did look a little bigger in this movie, but it could have just been the angle. <laughs> I was at the damn near front row. Yeah. yeah um, exactly. Maybe it's just the way he carried himself. But if you, you feel that way, and I know some others have said the same thing, but Paul's not necessarily the type of character I have. I have to see as this big hulking person either at the same time, because a lot of his strength comes from the weirding way. Yep. And just his knowledge. Yep. Right. And his char- charismatic ways with people and how he talks with people and communicates. And yeah, and I don't mean he needed the, to be like jacked, but I mean, put, put, a, put, a, put an extra 10 or 15 pounds of muscle on him. That's all. Maybe just, just to but I also just looked more. at it that he's leaner probably because he ain't been eating so fat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 But I mean, overall, I love that. I thought Austin Butler did a great job as fade. I think Dave Bautista was fantastic mm-hmm. as uh Reban. I thought uh, uh, Javier Bardem was great as Stilgar. I mean, all the performances. I mean, really, I can't think of anything in there that I just felt completely missed the mark or was bad. Uh, it was just... Well, and I want to address bass player 2011 Iffy's uh, super chat there real quick. Mm-hmm. Sends in five. He says, now nah, there's n- no north and south in the book. Paul rallies all the Fremen for the jihad at the end. Exactly. Now there is like a, a group of them in the South that are like terraforming, but there's not this religious separation. Right. Exactly. They call you know them, I mean? Like in the book, they call them the Southern sieges. And I mean, or yeah, the exactly. Sieges. There's different like, sieges, but they're not like, they don't, they're all united. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't remember there ever being like a separate, deeply religious sect, but again, it's been so long since I read the books as I'm watching the film, I didn't remember enough whether to question it or not, you know, but uh, so I was just, I almost was, I don't want to say it was normie going in there to watch it, but I had forgotten just enough about the original text that I could just watch it. And just as long as it was executed good, well, I was yeah, happy. I mean, you can still enjoy it for the most part. The visuals, the, I mean, the effects wise, I mean, I, I, I can't think of another film besides maybe Godzilla this year that is in the last couple of years that has had as good effects as this. I mean, maybe the first film had a little bit better effects. The only thing I would say that felt different this time out compared to the first film mm-hmm. is that it felt like this movie had a lot more digital effects as opposed to the first film that had a lot of bigatures and miniatures and things they were mixing. Cause um, from my memory from like watching the making of it, like all those ships and stuff in the yard when they're mm-hmm. getting doing that big ceremony thing, those are all like miniatures and stuff like that. They weren't like CGI. So mm-hmm. like, yeah, this one though, it felt like a lot more of it was done digitally as opposed to miniatures and stuff that was just me a personal note that i noticed but i could be yep. the only one yep all right let's see let me grab let me go back and grab some of these sub- other super chats here we've had waiting uh darth maul's lower half dune 2 awesome movie but misses really important stuff mm-hmm. the spacing guild mm-hmm. yep the importance of spice to them and that paul can destroy it forever yep. i thought that was yeah that's the one thing that really stuck out at me. I kept wanting to hear like the space and get like, if you think of the end of the 84 movie, the end of the sci-fi movie, Paul basically lays the law. He's like the navigators know what I can do. I can, I can, I can destroy every bit of spice production on this planet. If I snap my fingers right now. And he basically drew a line in the sand and said, this is it. Which side are you going to be on? And everybody, was like, okay, well, they can't live without spice. The navigators 
will be dead. Commerce among the great houses will cease because there's no way to travel if the navigators are blind and have no spice. So he basically had the universe uh, by the short on its knees, basically. And that's kind of the whole thing. And that's where Chani's character was important, too, because she understands because they've already been together for years in the book. They have a child and all the stuff they go through. But by the time the whole thing with, you know, the, the, the emperor goes down. She knows that that marriage is just a union of politics and it's more or less just a big F you to the emperor Yeah, because he's like, it's Paul just saying, basically, I'm going to take everything you have plus your daughter and I'm going to make your, your daughter suffer and you suffer vicariously because I'm not going to allow your bloodline to continue. Right. And your daughter's going to live in a sexless, loveless marriage and basically be a babysitter. Well, that's what eventually she becomes, but. You know, yep. and that gets really kind of like there's a, some soap opera business in there between Chani and her. But that's where I have issues with the end of the film because it's like, okay, so this is probably the most spoilerific I'll get because this is the biggest deviation is he makes the threat, says he's going to marry the princess, but none of the houses fall. They say that, no, screw you. So basically, as far as I know, Paul then should set everything, the atomics off which is kind of, so that's what I'm saying. It's like, this is not set up the way it should be because that's what basically makes them fall to their knees is that he threatens to destroy the spice, mm-hmm. right? Because that's what, like you were saying, it would just destroy everything going forward and take them back to zero, basically. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and and so their choice is either do what he says or there will be no, <laughs> you know. That's it. It's all done. Anymore. Yeah, it's yeah. all done. <laughs> yep. Ned Brickley, uh, glad you liked my Dune meme on Twitter. Worked this weekend. It was quiet. I was bored, and my twisted imagination attacked me. And he's referring to this. <laughs> I've seen a few of these. This, and, you know, uh, this is the best part is it's Tremors getting a little bit of a uh, – get yeah. some attention with all this stuff, definitely. Just yeah. – um, Somebody make this happen. <laughs> I just, I will, I will watch this. You're under the gold darn ground. <laughs> I know graboids. We'll call them graboids. Oh, God <laughs> almighty. Um, Marcus Squid. We should have trademarked that name. <laughs> was I the only one watching that- Dune 2 and waiting for Emperor Walken to look at the Bede Jesuit and say, Reverend Mother, I need more cowbell. Spice. The spice must flow. I I I wasn't crazy about walking. Like the rhythm, um, he was all right. But here's, you know, if you're gonna use walking, you you got walking, you use walking. I get that. That's what a lot of people have said, and I can't argue with that. Yeah. But here's another deviation from the book. In the book, the emperor is like two hundred some years old, but he's also looks like a thirty year old because of the spice, right. right? So he's not, and and that's kind of the whole thing is. He's starting to lose his power and charisma as Leto is gaining power mm-hmm. and charisma. So that's kind of what set this whole thing in motion and not having the, the spacing guild involved. You know, they also were involved. The emperor was involved and the Harkonnens were all involved and the Bene Gesserit were all involved. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's yeah. kind of the whole thing is you had basically everybody teaming up against this one family. And if it wasn't for Jessica doing what she did, they probably would have ex- would have succeeded. Right. So it was basically her love for Leto, which disrupted that horrific plan from going forward. But then it sets off this in motion, this chain of events that takes that makes Paul into this horrible person because of the things that were done to him, basically. So it's and again, not to get too deep into it, but anyway. Make sure you're subscribed to Valiant Renegade and join us every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern for the live show.